claims are on kills, and it's high time we talk about that. Now, if you are like me, read a lot about military aviation, especially World War One, World War Two, you will run into a wide array of kill claims and kill statistics and uh, numbers that just don't make sense when compared to each other. And the whole debate gets a new proportion, of course, on the internet, where people will always say like, oh, on this day, the Luftwaffe shot down 50 enemy fighters, or on this day, the Valiant RAF shot down, I don't know how many German bombers. And a lot of those numbers are based on the official claims by the pilots that were uh, made by these pilots in good faith. And uh, in reality, things do often look a little bit different. And this is what I want to talk about today. Now, going back to, of course, the internet, we of course see a lot of people uh, taking what is written in a book uh, and uh, taking these claim numbers, let's say that uh, a given squadron claimed 20 German kills, you know, a given RAF squadron killed uh, 20 German bombers on a given day, and they say, that's how many they shot down. Well, it's already in the word. It's a claim. It's perhaps not exactly true. However, let's expand the topic a little bit and go into more detail and into the context of how these claims are made and what we can, in fact, take out of them. Now, that a claim is not necessarily a guaranteed kill should be obvious to everybody. Um, on the internet, apparently less so. But to all of you guys that are probably tuning in on a regular basis to my channel, uh, to the people that read books, and uh, that have a high interest in the military aviation, this is a fairly standard thing. Uh, claims are not kills. However, there's a few things you can take out of claims, numbers, and uh, superimpose on the general theater or the general operations in the area that they happened in. Now, before we do that, let's talk about uh, the nature of claims, uh, kill credits and kill confirmations, and the actual number of shot down targets. Now, I want to make a few examples here. During the action at Guadalcanal, uh, I think it was on the August 24th, uh, 1942, uh, there was an American squadron, uh, VMF 223, I think, yeah, 223, who claimed to have shot down 11 Japanese bombers on that day, as well as five zero fighters. Now, this is the standard kill count that uh, was given by the uh, pilots to their squadron commander. The squadron commander looked at it, analyzed the action a little bit, and, and probably sent those claims on. And it's highly likely, although I'm not quite sure, that the squadron was in fact credited with these kills, in that these kills were in a certain way confirmed. However, now that VMF-223 has shot down apparently 14 Japanese uh, planes, 11 bombers, and, um, excuse me, not 14, 16, 11 Japanese bombers and five zero fighters, um, makes it look like a pretty good action. However, then going after the war, we look in the Japanese records and we realize that, oh dear, they uh, actually only lost three bombers and one zero during that action. Not exactly the same number, is it? In reality, uh, four Japanese planes were lost, but the Americans claimed 16. And the interesting part of that is that the Japanese, in the same action, claimed to have shot down 15 uh, Wildcats, yeah, F4F Wildcats. Well, as the American uh, records show us, the Americans only lost three Wildcats. So you can see both sides drastically overclaimed the actual impact they had during that operation um, and in, in a certain sense have in fact made uh, a very similar um, ratio of, of, of overclaiming to reality, yeah? 16 to 4 and 15 to 3. And that shows you a little bit of how reality was during World War II. And this is not the only example I can give you. For example, um, during the uh, Battle of Britain, there was a specific day, um, I believe it's in fact it's sometimes referred to as the Battle of Britain Day. Um, there was the 15th September uh, 1940, and the RAF claimed to have shot down 185 German aircraft, fighters and bombers. German records show that uh, the Germans only lost 60 in those, uh, on that day. Yeah? So the RAF overclaimed by a ratio of 3 to 1. 
again, you might say, oh, this is just, you know, the RAF, this is for propaganda reasons and so on and so forth. I don't actually believe that the uh, pilots were thinking about such things. Um, they made those claims in generally in good faith. They really believe that they uh, shot down a German aircraft. And this is very easy also to understand. Let's say you are a Hurricane or a Spitfire pilot. You see a German bomber, you go in for your attack, and the German bomber starts smoking. You see like fuel leaking, you see uh, coolant leaking. And the German pilot in Heinkel 111, he gets so surprised, he ditches his bombs, he puts his aircraft into a dive. Yes, he uses both hands because that's how the stick on the Heinkel 111 would operate. Um, and he just violently dives away. And the Spitfire pilot, which is you, or the Hurricane, if you want to have a Hurricane, you look down, you see this, this smoking and really messed up German bomber, and you think, yeah, he's going down. But before you can really analyze the situation and really track him, oh shoot, you just noticed a shadow, or just a glimmer in your, uh, in your, your peripheral vision. And you look there, and holy crap, there's a 109 bearing down on you. So what do you do? Do you keep eye on the Heinkel to see if he really splashes into the channel? No, you're gonna fight this guy. So you turn into a sharp maneuver and you're starting to fight this bugger that is behind you now. Then you go home back to base and you think like, oh, what happened, what happened? Oh yeah, yeah, that, 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 that Heinkel 111, I messed him up good. He just flew away. He just, he must have gone into the channel and you claim him. Now there is, for example, a thing that the RF that you can claim a probable, uh, or you can play, uh, claim a damaged. Uh, however, as we've seen in reality, mostly um, the probable and the damage claim weren't as well or weren't as uh, often used by the RAF uh, pilots and then they should have perhaps done in reality. But hindsight is always um, you know, a luxury that we have and they don't. However, at the same time, this Heinke 111 it is not ditching in the channel. One of his engines is out, he's ditching his bombs, he already ditched his bombs in fact, he's throwing out all the ammunition and he's trying desperately to go to the coast of France where he can crash land hopefully on any uh, friendly territory. Now another hurricane sees this bomber and he thinks, oh, that's, uh, that's easy picking. So he goes in, maybe with a swingman, and this struggling Heinkel 111 that's just flying, barely keeping in the air, um, gets another volley of three or three machine gun rounds right into it. Yeah. And again, it looks messed up. And again, the pilot makes a maneuver, he dives for it, uh, he just has to get out. And again, the hurricane pilots look down, it's like, oh yeah, he, he looks like he's going down. And suddenly, they see another German 109 coming at them, or they see a 110 coming at them, and they have to look at this guy, and a dogfight develops, and they don't know what happened to the bomber. Now, in this situation, it is not unreasonable to suggest that there is a possibility that two claims are made for the same aircraft. And this is sometimes how you get to these numbers. These claims are done in good faith by their pilots. They think they really shot that guy down or they have a reasonable degree of justification to think so. And they claim a kill and they are sometimes awarded a kill. Um, that, of course, inflates the number of claims to reality quite significantly. Um, and, for example, to talk about the Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe during the Battle of Britain, and, and I think they, they claimed something around 3,600 British aircraft destroyed, somewhere between 3,600 or 3,700. During the whole Battle of Britain, they thought they had destroyed that number of British aircraft. The reality is they hadn't even shot down half of that. Yeah, they, they shot down, I believe, it was somewhere between 1,600, 700, something like this. Um, so again, the kill numbers that they actually claim to what reality was is significantly different. And it should be mentioned here also that the official records, um, when it comes to what we claim to, uh, to what we claim to have inflicted upon the enemy, is not something that. Um, is artificially inflated just to look good. This is something that, uh, an argument that you often see on the internet, is like, oh, the Luftwaffe always inflated their kills for propaganda reasons, or the RAF during the Battle of Britain inflated their number for propaganda reasons. It is possible that, for example, in um, magazines or newspaper articles of the time, the numbers are artificially inflated. Absolutely, that happened all the time. 
Um, especially as the situation got grimmer and grimmer, you needed good news to keep the people, the, the populace, general civilization, actually uh, general uh, population happy. And uh, you know that they really believe that victory is still a possibility. And then it sounds much better if you say like, oh, a German plane shut down 200 American bombers. Even if in reality that's not so the case. But this is this is on the one hand propaganda, but the official records, um, you know, the, the ones that that the army has to look at of okay, how many how many casualties have we inflicted about, upon the enemy? Those have to be as accurate as possible because you want to have a realistic assumption, a realistic uh, number to work with, of you know where you can say okay, this is what we inflict about upon the enemy, and this is probably what they still have in reserve, and how does this influence future operations? You know, are we are we winning? Are we losing? Is there certain things we can learn about the situation, and, and so on? Um, but that's really you know one of the the the, the main explanations of why this uh, claim count is often inflated, uh, but at the same time, this is harming in a sense the uh, the, uh, the statistics people <laughs> that uh, deal with war and that have to analyze how much damage was inflicted upon the enemy and vice versa. Um, and uh, these people want a real good number. They want a realistic number. They have to plan a war. They don't want these overinflated claim numbers, but they have to work with them because that's just the natural way of things. Um, one of the things that you also often hear about, for example, are these really inflated numbers that bomber crew gave, bomber crews gave when uh, fighting, for example, American bomber crews uh, gave when fighting German uh, interceptors during the Battle of the, the Reich or like you know, the, the bombing operations over Germany, let's call it like that. Um, for example, in the, the Schweinfurt raid, I remember, I think the, the American bomber crews, they claimed about 288 German aircraft destroyed. And if I remember correctly, uh, there, were there weren't even 288 German fighters operating on that day or attacking this formation. And the real lost number of the Germans was closer to 40. So again, yeah, the numbers. But it makes sense, and this is something that you often heard about, of course, is that bomber crews, they fly in a tight formation, and as, although not as tight as many people believe, you know, it's not wing on wing, but it's, it's a little bit staggered. Um, and they did gunners, and at any point in time, five, six, seven gunners might be fight, uh, shooting at the same German. And then suddenly this German erupts into a ball of flame and goes... Yeah. And obviously everybody, every single gunner thinks, it was me. I shot him down. That was my kill. But in reality, it was only one of them. But they all claim that kill. And then there's, of course, the discussion that you can have that maybe bomber command or the bomber uh, crew squadrons and the, the bomber squadrons... Um, were not as harsh when it came to the kill marking or the kill claiming and the uh, the post uh, rip, post battle analysis that went into really uh, uh, really finding out who made that kill for morale purposes and so forth because these bomber crews were getting hammered over the Reich for a long duration and you had to keep morale up and what what better way of keeping morale up than uh, giving the gunners a kill confirmation. Uh, by saying like, well done, you really did shoot down that 109 and then the next one is in line and it's like, well done, you also shot down that 109 and well done you, you also shot down that 109. That is simply the reality of things. Um, however, it should be noticed, once again, these claim numbers, while rhetoric and reality very different things, they are done in good faith by these crews and by confirming them or crediting them in the context that these credits were done and these confirmations were given, they are most likely understandable. Now, before we continue, there should be, for example, the elephant in the room that we should mention, and that is that occasionally we have in World War II a moment or a specific pilot who makes a false claim. And this gets found out sometime around, you know, some weeks later or some months later. And this is something that you know, often is just a singular um, incident, you know, a single pilot or a single pilot and his wingman do this. For example, there is a, a good story in uh, A Higher Call by, uh, over the story, of course, of the, the German pilot uh, Franz Stiegler, who, who kind of saved a B-17 uh, during uh, World War II. It's a very good book, you should read it. A little bit on the emotional side, but it's a good book nonetheless. 
but he recounts, or in his memoir, well, it's not really a memoir, it's a shared memoir, but in this book it recounts that one uh, flight leader of his squadron in Africa and his wingman, they were making false claims. And this is also something that I often see on the internet. It's like, oh, but you know, remember that those German pilots in Africa, they were making false claims all the time and so on. Yeah, um, that happened. Um, you know, humans will be humans and some will do that. Uh, however, it was found out. There was an inquiry uh, launched and these pilots were punished. And it is not something that was condoned. It was not something that was accepted. And I find it hard to believe that it's something like that would be accepted. Um, because of the nature of war. Yeah? Men and women struggle in these perilous times and somebody who's lying about their exploits uh, and somebody who's, who's discovered to be a false hero is not a very popular figure afterwards. Um, so, you know, that, that, you know, if you see on the internet a story about you know, false claims and that being, that being uh, the proof that there was an institutional bias um, and so on, Treat that with a little bit of uh, you know, salt because most likely you know, that's not exactly how it is. However, I want to go back to my main point, claims aren't kills. There is a certain amount of national bias, of course, that we discover in these situations when people say like, oh, on this day, the RAF shot down so many, many planes. Um, and then you know, they, they try to make some kind of narrative behind that of being... You know, the RAF has the best pilots, or the Luftwaffe has the best pilots, or the US Army has the best pilots, or whatever. Um, all of that is pretty much silly, and I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, it should be pointed out, however, how quickly we go from uh, claim to shot down on the internet. A lot of books written by respectable authors will use, of course, the claim numbers, but they will specifically say, on this and this day, this and this squadron or this and this pilot claimed so and so many kills. That then sometimes gets translated in those kills happened. No, those are claims. And the, and the author often makes sure that he says those are claims. Or he says this and this squadron was credited with these amount of kills. And credited is a, maybe a little bit higher on the believable scale. Because credited means that institutionally... Um, the squadron was awarded those kills. Yeah? The, it was looked at and there was a reasonable assumption or a reasonable degree um, of um, proof or circumstantial proof to suggest that these kill numbers are in fact uh, correct. And then the army or the air force or whatever credits these kills to the squadron. Again, this doesn't mean that so and so many planes were actually shot down but the squadron is credited with those kills. Again, very important to keep this in mind. Yeah, claims, credited, and shot down, usually, this is usually, yeah, actually it's, it's, it's more of an exponential curve, but whatever. Um, the, the numbers vary quite significantly, and depending on which number you use, make sure you know the context, and make also sure that the person that you talk with knows the context, otherwise you're just lying. Um, however, um, there is one quote I want to, uh, actually a couple of quotes, I want to read out of this book. Yeah? This is uh, Fire in the Sky by Eric Bergerund. It's a very good book. Uh, if you want to know uh, about uh, the air war in the Pacific, this is pretty much standard literature for you. Uh, it is, uh, let me just check, I think it was 600 something um, without, oh actually no, it was, yeah, no, it's more. Um, around 670 to 680 pages, yeah. Small writing, not a lot of pictures, have fun. Um, really good book. But I want to read out something here, um, a couple of quotes that will give you an idea of how a good author will deal with such numbers. Yeah? So, now here he's talking about some of the, uh, the claim numbers and the kill numbers. Uh, I believe it was 1944 in, in, during the war in the South Pacific. And he says, if, if you want to check this, by the way, it is on page 467. Yeah? The totals I arrived at, leaving a small margin for error, were 1,437 victory claims by pilots of the 5th Air Force, 428 claims from 13th Air Force, and 1,504 from the Marine Corps. I wish to evaluate the overall losses and their causes later, but for the moment keep in mind that firm victory totals for air-to-air -air combat will never be known for for any theater in World War II. 
Yeah? So before he even goes into an analysis of these numbers, he, he makes a somewhat of a disclaimer and he tells you, look, these are disputed probably. We won't be know for sure and uh, we can infer some information out of them, but just general trends. Now he continues saying, um, another interesting point can be gleaned from the figures. Between April the 1st, 1942 and January the 1st, 1943, the free US forces claimed 682 victories. This does not include the 133 Japanese aircraft John Lundström, who is a different author, author claimed fell to US Navy fighters in the carrier battles of 1942, including Midway. Thus, even allowing for significant overclaims, the figures suggest that the Japanese suffered serious losses against even first generation US fighters such as the Wildcat and P-40. So this of course goes a little bit back into, into the World War I in 1942 and 1943. Um, where he says, even allowing for significant overclaims, the figures suggest that the Japanese suffered serious losses. Now, this is one of the uh, you know, things that you can really take away from such kill claims. You can see how much of an escalation of violence there was in a specific theater. For example, if a specific theater between uh, January 1940 and uh, July 1940, there are only 40 claims there. But then between um, July 1940 and September 1940, there are suddenly 500 claims. Even if those claims are not all correct, maybe if the real number of shot down enemy planes was only 200, you can see there is an escalation happening there. There's something going on and we have to analyze it. Last thing I would like to uh, add here, also from, uh, from the book, uh, uh, Fire in the Sky. Again, it is not my intention to substantiate any victory figures. Most studies from all theaters of World War II indicate that enemy losses were not as high as those claimed. Nevertheless, the Japanese air arm was punished brutally in the South Pacific, and there can be no doubt that hundreds were shot down in fighter combat. Once again, this is a pretty much you know, a, a conclusion that you can say, and is saying, look, we are not disputing um, the fact that a lot of fighters were shot down. We are not disputing the fact that a lot of bombers were shot down. The overall claims, probably a little bit hogwash, um, but we can infer information out of that. And that is what uh, Eric Bergeron does in his book quite well. And he really explains well how, even though the claims might be you know, a little beefed up artificially because of some of the uh, reasons I gave you earlier, we can still infer information out of that. And that's how we should read them. We shouldn't go around saying like, oh, 500 claims, <clears throat> that's us. Um, but more like 500 claims, hmm, that's interesting. What happened? What's going on? How are these claims uh, develop, you know, how, how, what's the background of these claims? And uh, what, ca what can we take out of them? So that is really my rounding up conclusion of this whole discussion on claims, credit, confirmation, shutdown. Um, sadly, often it's used for national bias. Sadly, it's, uh, you know, chest punching. We did so well, um, even though we all were, well, nearly all of us were not alive back then. Um, and it has very little to do with historical analysis. So if you ever see a discussion unfolding on the internet where somebody is coming up with numbers, ask him for their source, ask him, are these claimed? Are these credited? Are these actually shot down? You know, what does the, uh, the archive say of the nation that supposedly lost these many planes? Did they really lose those planes or not? Um, ask those questions. They're they are fair questions to ask. And if you see that person getting defensive or aggressive, you know that there is a problem. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. It was a little bit different of what I usually do. I hope to make these kind of videos more frequent as well. Now, if you enjoyed this video and like what I do with military aviation here on YouTube, um, please check out my Patreon. Even a small contribution can go a long way in helping me out, uh, bring this kind of content to your living room. And if you're interested in a quite a long analysis I did uh, between the Japanese A6M20 and the American F4F Wildcat, where I also go into history claims, you can click on this video right here. So as always, I hope you guys have a great day, good hunting, and see you on the sky.